Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to our very first Shortcuts episode. Now, what is a Shortcuts episode? Well, basically, it's a it's like a fun-sized candy bar, okay? It's a short tutorial. We're going to show you some quick tips, techniques, and other cool stuff, and hopefully just waste uh, one to five minutes of your time instead of, you know, 20 to 30. It's win-win. Anyway, let's go and jump right in. I'd give you a better explanation, but, you know, time is... Uh, of the essence. Okay, so what I have here is a 3D light, and if I move it around, you can see that we have this bump mapping going on in the background. And using that texture, I can create sort of a 3D bump map effect. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about is converting a 3D position to a 2D position. So, for example, I have a lens flare here, and if you know a lens flare, it's only two dimensional. You move it, you know, X and Y, but our light is in 3D space. But using a simple expression, we're going to link that to our light. And this way, when we move our light around in 3D, our beautiful lens flare follows along, and bam, we can have uh, lens flares all over the place. So let's go and get started. Uh, shoot, we only got like one minute left. Okay, I'm going to go and create a new composition. And we're going to use the widescreen D1 preset. I'm going to choose OK. And then I'm going to take our grunge texture from the Riot Gear collection at videocopilot.net. I'm going to scale it down just a bit. And then I'm going to choose Layer Precompose. And I'll move all attributes into the new comp. We'll call this Texture. Choose OK. Now I'm going to change the layer to a 3D layer. And then I'm going to create a new 3D light. We'll make it a blue color. Choose OK. And point light and OK. The other thing we'll do is create a new solid that's dark blue. And create just a little bit of a vignette around the edges. I'm going to double click on the ellipse mask tool. Hit F. Subtract the mask. And then feather it out. Then I'm going to hit F4 change the mode to let's say classic color burn hit T and lower the opacity bam so we gotta do it quick we only got like 30 seconds left now here's our texture and we want to add that bump map effect so we're gonna go to the effects and presets we'll type in glass and we're gonna drag that onto the texture layer and right away we see some weird distortion happening but I'm gonna go into the surface properties into the light, change it from light type distant to point light, and then we want to play with the softness, bring it down a lot. And maybe the height down as well to maybe about three. And so now you can see we're sort of seeing a bit of a 3D effect, and we can increase it just a bit to see it better. And if we lower the softness, it kind of creates an interesting effect. Now, if we move the light position around, you can see it's creating bump mapping based on that point. Now, the only problem is that this is a 2D coordinate and this is a 3D coordinate. So, now, if you've ever tried to link a 3D object and a 2D object together, it's a little tricky and it doesn't always work depending on the angle of the camera. So what we're going to do is use a simple expression. I'm going to alt click on the light position and it creates an expression and what I'm going to do is pick whip, delete what's in here and then pick whip the light. Just the name light. And then we're going to type dot to comp parentheses bracket zero comma zero comma zero bracket, parentheses, semicolon. So what that's going to do is convert that 3D position to a 2D position. And now you can see our bump mapping follows along and it's kind of created a cool 3D effect. Now the other thing we can do is go to the texture and play with the shading options of the glass filter. So we can turn say the diffuse down and that makes it look a little bit wetter, maybe a little bit shinier, and maybe increase the specular. And uh, that looks pretty cool. Now to create a source point, what I did is I created a new solid, and I made it white. 
and I made just a little circle and then choose effect stylize glow and we'll make it uh, you know blue and light blue shut the mask off for just a second and change it to alpha channel and once you do that those settings look pretty good and duplicate it and then soften the second one a little bit so now it's kind of just a soft point you can also feather the mask a couple of pixels and then hit P and we're gonna copy that same expression that's on our texture here and paste it to the position of this so alt click on the stopwatch and just paste it so now if we move the light around they both move and then we can hit P on the light alt click type wiggle uh, I don't know uh, point five comma two fifty and just do a quick RAM preview okay so as you can see it's kind of a cool effect and uh, it works pretty well now for the lens flare I'm gonna create a new black solid choose effect generate lens flare again I'm gonna alt click on the flare center and we're gonna add that expression again I just pasted it from before and we'll change the transfer mode to screen and so there you go everything's all linked up now I don't like the color of the lens flare so I always add a curves adjustment and uh, kind of tint it a bluish color for this case and also if I go to the RGB channel I can uh, crush it out just a bit now sometimes it gets a little oversaturated so I add a tint effect and just bring it down just a bit to match it nicely and now I figure these take about five minutes and according to my math if you know I spent two hours doing that I could probably do 500 episodes or so and you know we're gonna have to check on the math but you know that's like five million every month and uh, you know I'm not saying I have time to do five million but certainly I have time to do a couple of million and uh, you know like I said the more fun sized candy bars you get the better Halloween is well anyway my name's Andrew Kramer and thanks for watching